Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. My name is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marque of Living Streams International, bringing you matters of faith with Graphic Online. My perspective in life or my, my posture where scripture is concerned is scripture has to be so meaningful and scripture has to be down to earth for everyone else to be able to follow. This morning, I bring you something. It's, it's very funny, but I would like to call it, get off your high horse. So if there's somebody beside you, or maybe there's somebody really, really who you want to say something to, you know, uh, a Humpty Dumpty in your life or something like that, send this one to the person and tell the person, get off your high horse. But you know what? You need to get off your high horse. In, in Acts of the Apostles, Acts chapter 9, verse 4, there is a very powerful story. In Acts chapter 9, there is a very powerful story of a young man called Saul. Very, very educated, brilliantly educated. I mean, he's, I mean, he himself, when he was mentioned his academic laurels and the kind of, uh, the man had worn what we call uh, in, in the university academic pompo, you know, the gown. I mean, the, the gown of pomposity, academic pomposity. We call it academic pompo. You'd be very, very surprised. Paul had sat under some of the most learned scholars in, in Judaism at that time. And one of them was called Gamaliel that he even boasted about. And Gamaliel's prowess in the scriptures, Gamaliel's power in, in terms of interpreting a theology was, was so profound that in Acts of the Apostles, they even had to refer to him and he had to be a source to speak. And it, it quietened uh, almost everything. That is a persecution against the, the, the Christians. But Saul at that time, who later became Paul, you know, he was, he was so um, filled with with, with, his, with his importance and he was so filled with the things that he knew. You know, there's something that, and because he knew so much, you get it, he knew the law, he knew the Torah, he knew everything. I mean, I mean, he was well learned and, and then using the knowledge that he had, he thought that the Christians who were then new were all wrong. They were wrong theologically. They were zealots. They were um, uh, anathema. Maranatha, there were all sorts of things. There were, there were people who needed not to be tolerated and they had to be removed from the face of the earth. In actual fact, he was the one who supervised the stoning of Stephen, Saul. And then emboldened by the fact that Stephen had been stoned and people were happy, he began, he mounted a horse on his way to Damascus. On his way to Damascus and he was riding that horse and you know, he was riding a zeal. He was riding a horse of zeal that I need to remove. He got letters that empowered him to bring all those Christians to jail and wipe them off the face of the earth. And all because he was schooled in the old. He was a scholar of the old. He could not tolerate, I mean, the new that was coming. And so he began to ride his high horse. It was a horse of pride. It was a horse of accomplishment. It was a horse that he thought, well, yeah, this is Saul coming. So you can imagine Saul. But then do you know what God did? On the road to Damascus, he came crashing down. A light shone from heaven and he came crashing down. And when he came crashing down, when he got off his high horse, and that was when for the first time, he said, my Lord. He was riding a horse of pride in his, in his letters. Yet that had shut out what he was doing in his, in his ignorance. He thought he was learned. He was ignorant. He was really ignorant. He was also riding a horse of prejudice. So he was riding a horse of pride. He was riding a horse of ignorance. He was riding a horse of prejudice. And he was, he, you know, he, he, he had cocooned himself in the knowledge that he had that he was not open for any other. And his pride and his boast was in the fact that he knew. And so he was riding that horse. But God found a way to get him off his high horse. And it was when God threw him off his high horse 
Now listen to what God did. God shut his eyes. Your eyes are your receptacle for receiving revelation. What you see is what gives you revelation, your eyes. God shut the eyes because the eyes that he had was the eyes of the old. And God said, there is something I want to do with your life that I need to shut the old. And so that when I send somebody to open, an ambassador of the new called Ananas will come and open up your eyes. So God shut his eyes to the old and made him open to the new. But for me, the most paramount thing how he was brought down. You can be so proud. You know, sometimes the Bible says knowledge puffeth up. And sometimes you think you know and you think you've reached and you think you don't need anybody else and you think you are high and mighty. You believe you are an institution and you don't care about anybody else. It is you. You are too big for anybody else to speak to you. You are too tall for anybody else to be above you. you you're too big-headed. You are a humpty dumpty sitting on a wall. And time, the clock is ticking. Tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock. With time, God will find a way to let your horse crash. God will find a way to remove you from that high seat and make you fall down. And then for the very first time in your life, you would acknowledge that there is somebody bigger, there is somebody greater than you. Right now, maybe you walk and think that, hey, Udai, Udai, you are bigger than everything. You are bigger than everybody. So proud in your accomplishment. So proud in the things that you think you are. So proud because of the applause of people or the appellations people uh, give to you. Listen, you better get off your high horse now. Because if you don't, God will find a way to get you off your high horse. Something little, something small. God will trigger that thing. And that thing will become a catalyst. And for the first time, you'll be handling things you can't control. And for the first time, you'll be brought to your knees like Nebuchadnezzar. You need to fall on your knees and chew grass for 70 years for you to know that you are nobody. Like Pharaoh, God is going to go. He would do something that will bring you down. God will crush your horse. And God, he's so loving there are things he wants to do with your life and your pomposity, your pride, your prejudice, your arrogance it becomes a stumbling block. So he will find a way to bring you to your knees because there are fresh revelations he wants to give to you. There are fresh things he wants to give to you. Sometimes God will use little things and you may try or attempt to control it, but you can't. You'll be on your knees. When the tears begin to flow, then you lift up your eyes and say, my God, my Lord. Humility pays. Because the Bible says God resisted the proud and gave grace to the humble. There is grace for the humble, but there is resistance for the proud. It is a choice you have to make. Get off your high horse now, or God will find a way to get you off your high horse. Get off your high horse. Otherwise, God is going to get you. See you next time, and God bless you as you step off your high horse. Amen.